Hello there, my name is Elytrium and welcome back to Bedrock. And today in this episode, we have finally finished this little mansion over here. Little mansion? It's not really so little anymore. And what do I mean by finished? Well, um, we did the inside, finally. Yep, that's right. Promises made, promises delivered. Vote for Elytrium 2024. Yes, we have completed the inside of the space and it is all wonderfully dressed up. And, um... One minor issue that you just need to overlook, and that's the, um, I've kind of made this a, a tavern, an inn. I don't know why this suddenly became an inn. This was a mansion, and now, suddenly, it's an inn. So, um, that base way over there that we started with, um, it has some competition now. Yeah, we're gonna have to change the rates over there. But, let's go ahead and go inside of this beautiful structure that we have right here and get started with the tour. Now, first off, remember, there are two entrances for this, one up there, one down here. We're gonna start in the basement. And the basement starts off with just a lovely little storage area. We got barrels filled up with stuff. These could be, these could be basically anything, food, drinks, supplies, really whatever we want. But over here on the right side, we've got ourselves a little workstation with a couple of pieces of armor that we may wanna show off for work. Every house needs a workstation in it. Whether it's something you have in your garage, something you have in your basement, something you have somewhere else, you gotta have a workstation. It's the only way to get work done. We've got one little kind of nook cranny over here. It's a little bit bigger than a nook, isn't it? Another little area over here that we can wrap around. And then going on over here, a little more dark and moody. If you notice, breaking up this floor pattern again, just to give your eyes a little bit of a treat to think about. We have these wood planks here. We have this glow lichen, some trap doors to make the floor a little sunken in, and some sunken plates. Excuse me, um, I don't remember what those are, slabs. And then down here, if we are treating this lichen in of some sign or a tavern, this would be where all of the core business would be done. You know, you'd come down here, you would go review your supplies, figure out what you need to be ordered. This is where those people would make all of those determinations. And we have a jukebox down here on the floor that I somehow missed. All right, moving on up to the first floor, however, uh, we're just gonna hide this area real quick. Pretend we're coming in through the front door. And uh, we have a pearl door here. You notice it opens a little bit funkily. That's to keep zombies out because, uh, yeah, had that door broken down many times while zombies while building this. So coming on straight into here on our Left side, we have kind of our seating, dining, entertainment area. If you think of this kind of like a restaurant, you know, this is where your waiter would take you to your table. Suddenly now this is a restaurant, I realize, but we have lots of tables over here. Some of them more maybe important than others, some close to the fire. Depending upon how much you want to pay, you get the better seating in here. Have some moody candles to help with the, uh, the ambiance, make it feel a little bit lighter in here at night but if we come on over here to this side we have once again done these draping curtains type of things just kind of keep this back room out of view right when you walk in but if you were to walk in this would be where all of the servers would be where they would bring your food out so this in here these red candles i did not like them when i first placed them but when i placed them down oh they are so moody now and i'm sorry that the color space in this video is a little bit wonky Something is wrong with my recorder, so you can't super appreciate it the way that I'm appreciating it here. I know we're back to 2021 Eladrium with awkward color space issues. But nice little balcony over here that people can come out to if you're just needing to cool off or need to grill some cooking outside. Another serving area over here where people can bring the plates through. And if for some reason they need to go upstairs, we also have that curtained off. But speaking of upstairs, the upstairs is a new treat for us. We have a full-blown library research area. And yes, if you are coming to a tavern of this size, I think you would expect to have access to all of the resources that it would offer, including all of their library and all of their knowledge. So we have seating areas over here. And if we want to think about a little bit of the lore, people would come here. Well, this is a place to gather knowledge. It's a place to gather food. It's a place to plan out your next area of attack. And I've, I've tried kind of building out some chairs over here. Hmm, Minecraft needs chairs. We need chairs that you can actually sit in. I don't care if they look like these um, staircases, but we need real chairs. Have a beautiful view of the area over here. And then just some more bookshelves. And yes, ah, 1.20. 1.20 trail and 
Tails. Tails and trails? Yeah, we need ourselves some chiseled bookshelves. As soon as that comes out, we are going to be working on replacing these bookshelves with some chiseled bookshelves so we can actually throw some books in. That will help break up the eye candy just a little bit more and make this much more visually interesting. But until then, we're just going to have to leave with these books. So moving on upstairs to our third level that we have completed out. Yes, there are still more levels to this. If I can get up these stairs, we have our uh, living area, I guess we would call it. Well, these are where your rooms are. So we start off another little table up here where anyone can come out and maybe have a light breakfast if we need to serve some food up here. I don't know why you're eating steak for breakfast, but good for you if you're that kind of person. Tried a different type of chair up here. Don't know how I feel about this because I don't like using things that were once on fire. I feel like that's a bad idea. If you got some coin, I'm going to go ahead and sleep here just because it's getting a little bit dark outside. Thunderstorms. Uh, if you got some money, Maybe you can have one of these nice private rooms all to yourself, or maybe you don't. If you don't have the money for that, you can come on over here and you can have one of these larger community rooms here, these uh, hostel type rooms, I think's how we call them. And, um, you know, nice and cozy with your friends. And if you really don't have any money and you just really need a place to sleep, well, um, maybe in this little hostel room over here where there is lots of bed or maybe it's just for your entire party you know your entire party likes to hang out together in one room that way you know you can harass each other in the middle of the night coming over here though we have a nice beautiful view i've shown this off before of the landscape and this would be like the um the the, the master suite if you will and i haven't quite decided if i wanted to close this area off or not i'm thinking i should just you know this is the penthouse room you deserve to have the penthouse kind of treatment but on the other hand, maybe it makes you want to spend some more coin and upgrade. We do have some more different chair designs over here. Very comfy. And then, of course, the honeymoon suite. Um, just one bed. So I uh, hope you, you know, maybe didn't bring any of your friends here. <laughs> maybe just your one friend if you have one friend. But that is this area right here. I'm thinking maybe I should put some windows in the back here just to light this up some more. But... We have plenty of light coming in from this front window here and from the lanterns that we have. But moving on up, yes, I figured out how to access this upper area. We have our storage system kind of riffing on the storage system we have in our other main base that we have. I know I have so many main bases now. The other large mansion that we had built before we had built this one. Wow, that really doesn't narrow it down. The one over to the right. Just over the right over here. So we've got storage. We're kind of riffing off the idea that we have there where this is just storage. Maybe thinking like this is where we store some of our dry produce, vegetables, you know, hanging things. I know these are glowberries. Minecraft needs more types of hanging things. The, the, the fruit and vegetables update. That's what we need. But nice, beautiful windows out here that we can look out of. Uh, a little bit of hole I clearly need to patch up. I will work on that here in a little bit. And then that's that. So we do have this entire interior of this now completed, which means we can now start working on what the other things we need to work on in this episode. Now, there are a couple things that I do want to check out today. This episode is coming out before... No, the episode is going to be coming out after 1.20 release because 1.20 comes out on the 7th. But obviously, we've recorded a few days before that. So we do need to check on some of our supplies to make sure that we are in tip-top shape for the 1.20 update. And I nailed going through that window. Beautiful. So we're going to come over here and check out a few of the things down here that we need to make sure we have for the 1.20 update. And the thing I am most worried about is our bamboo farm. I need to check it because bamboo is going to be the material of choice for 1.20 because you're going to be able to make wood out of it. And making wood out of it means that we can make wood planks. Wood planks mean barrels and regular planks mean chests. So clearly I have run this recently, but we're going to go ahead and run it just maybe one more time to get all of this bamboo out. That is really what we need to be doing. This stuff right here is going to be the lifeblood of 1.20. It's going to save us so much on any other type of wood that we have that it is going to be absolutely essential to have. We're going to go ahead and reset this mechanism because I do not want it going off randomly. Uh, even with a chunk load distance of six, this machine still proves to be a little bit problematic if you're not in the immediate chunk load area. 
um, obviously when you go out of the render distance or the ticking distance of this this entire machine it just kind of breaks down so we're gonna let this fly all the way back to the other side and then we're gonna have our allays start picking everything up for us and then we will go check on what our storage situation for all of these materials looks like you know what else we need in a 1.20 update? I know it won't be in 1.20, but it'll be in something else. We need a way to silence ticking mechanics that you hear. I have them muted finally, but oh, they are still a big distraction. So I have muted them for you. So we now that once that is docked, uh, maybe I also need to close out this window real quick. Yeah, we'll get some more tin glass here in a little bit. We're going to swing on down over here to where our large storage supply station is. And I believe we have all the materials that we need. Let's just check on our bamboo supplies here real quick. Where, yeah. Okay, we got bamboo, three double chests of bamboo, and then two shulker boxes. And I think I have some others coming over here. Um, yeah, so we got another double chest here. And then that'll probably fill us up with maybe another double chest as those materials come in. So I think we should be good to go, but I imagine that we will burn through most of that before... You know the day's over with 1.20 looking at our other supplies here we have plenty of bone meal so that will help with anything that we need to do we're doing okay on iron gas tears and gunpowder so we should be good for rockets but as cassie mentioned where we need to go for our next adventure is going to be much much further away than our rockets can take us um and it, i think the limiting factor is actually whether we have sugarcane or not but material-wise, I think we are in an okay position. With these updates, you really don't know what you're going to need until you go into it. You can plan, plan, plan as much as you want, but sometimes things just get overlooked. So we're going to do our best and hope that we have everything that we need. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and put this piece of bamboo back in this chest here, just because I don't want to be carrying it around. There we go. And now... We need to start getting over to our build site for the day because as Cassie mentioned, we're going to need a bigger boat and it's going to need to be a big boat because it's going to have to carry us and our supplies, according to her, many, many, many blocks away. I think she said B with a billion, billion with a B, very, very long ways away. Now, I do have one dilemma that I need to solve before we go into our time lapse, and that's where we want to build this thing. Now, the big question that I have is whether I want to build it kind of here in this middle area or if I want to build it maybe over to this lake over there. There's a couple pros and cons to each if you want to walk through the, with them with me. Obviously this area directly behind me, this could be a really good area because it's kind of front and center. However, it does take away the option to rebuild a village here or something in the future, which I'm just not super duper sure on. Um, kind of detracts away from this area if we build something big there the other option that we have though is this lake over here which would be perfect for a boat but remember our boat is going to be more of an airship and building over water is potentially super duper frustrating and a pain so i'm going to go ahead and figure that out you enjoy the time lapse and the music and i'll worry about the building so let's go And one quick time lapse later, we have the uh, hull of our airship. Yes, I know it is not a lot, but remember, we are taking it a little bit slower here nowadays. We are not busting through super massive builds in one day, or at least in one episode, like we've done previously. We're going to take it slow, and that is to not only help me, but to also help you with seeing kind of what the build process looks like. It's more fun to take things a little bit slow. I know the time lapses are great, but taking it slow sometimes lets you see a little bit more into the creative process. I do think the hull is actually really nice, and I know it's hard to see with the bizarre color grading that is going on with this video. I think what I need to do is actually stripe this with either some black stone down at the bottom or some gold stripes I think would look really good too. This mangrove wood, yeah. Lots of things that we can do with this, but I'm thinking maybe do something like on real boats how we have 
iron or something that kind of rust proof painting down at the bottom i know it's already red but have some other thing down there i think could really make this pop but coming up on here into the hold of the ship we actually have a lot of space for activities down here now a couple things that i was thinking about when i was building this first off we need to take cassie with us so i think Either this main hold area or the hold area in the back would work very well. Obviously, this entire area is going to be decked. And then we're going to have, you know, railings on the side. And then we're going to have some sort of sails and maybe a mast. I don't know. Do you need a mast for an airship? I don't know. We'll see. It, we're not going to have a, um, like a dirigible airship. So there's not going to be like a hot air balloon filled up with helium or anything like that. What I'm thinking about doing is having large wind sails that are out to the other side and we'll uh figure out how to get cassie to give us instructions to build a gigantic engine here on the back so we can have a lift off but there is plenty of room and down here in this hold area for activities so whether we put cassie in the back or in the middle i'm not sure we'll need to figure out what the buoyancy ends up looking like right over the center of the mass is because she's probably the heaviest thing that we need to carry but in the back here you know we can have crew quarters or any type of supplies all of our shulker boxes that we'll need to take with us on this journey and basically anything else that we want now a couple things that i'm thinking about this is not going to be like a pirate ship so we're not going to have a big you know captain's quarters here in the back i think this is probably going to be more like um i don't want to say a yacht but more like a a, a schooner or Maybe like some some ship from you know the 18 1900s somewhere in that area in design so we're probably going to have you know our um, wheel kind of centered towards the back and then we'll probably just have a couple buildings here in the front and then actually all of our hold area will be down at the bottom so there's not going to be anything big in the back uh, in terms of mass, uh, like I said, I don't know if we need to bring a mass with us or not. It might be beneficial, though, in case we want to take this on the water sometime. I don't know. Might want to take it on the water. And then, like I said here, you know, kind of out here to the sides have some wings of some kind. So that way we can get some air while we're in the sky. And that will give us our maneuverability for this. And then I'm not sure whether I want to put them in the back or up here in the front. But um, kind of like, you know um ailerons on an airplane no that's not right um what well, basically something up here in the front that will allow us to control the uh the pitch the up down of the airship i don't know whether putting that in the front is the best idea on airplanes you normally want to have them in the back but maybe if we have those up here in the front maybe that will help us steer the ship just a little bit better i'm not sure the Making an airship is a little bit different from making an airplane and making an airship that can also do water is also a little bit different. So we will find out whether that's an effective plan here later. I don't know. We might have to make a scale model of this some other place. But that is my plan for this airship so far. And I think that's going to be the end of this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate you watching these videos. Hopefully in the next episode, we'll be able to get the decking done on this. Maybe get a couple of the buildings in. We need to move Cassie into here and hopefully she can give us instructions on how to actually build an engine that can take this thing off of being on a ground dock and bring it up into the air. And she still hasn't told us where we're going yet. So hopefully we can figure that out pretty soon. But like I said, that's going to be it for me in this episode. As always, thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate it. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. And as always, remember, you are always welcome on Bedrock. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.